Welcome everybody to painting skies in watercolor and in this video I'm going to be showing you four different skies that you can paint big puffy beautiful white clouds against a blue sky even how to tweak those and change them into slightly darker clouds with a backlighting. I'll also be showing you how to create really smooth and elegant washes. I'll demonstrate how to paint beautiful cirrus clouds as they float through the sky. And finally, I will be showing you stormy skies and how to build through glazes, how to uh, create texture with some very simple and easy tools. I hope you'll find this video useful. Obviously for um, you avid landscape painters, the sky is an important element in a successful landscape painting as well and should never be overlooked. I'll be discussing with you some of my favorite color combinations too to make really um, natural and believable results. Be sure to consult the full materials list below in the description uh, underneath the video and that will take you to a link that you can download your companion file which is um, going to contain everything you need to get you through this video. It will have diagrams and links for bonus material that will help you with the setup and uh, describe some of the terms via a glossary as well. All of these little tips and tricks will help you to set you up for success for this video tutorial. Thank you for joining me and I hope you get a lot out of this video and I'm wishing you as always happy painting and continued success on your artistic journey. For a complete list of full video tutorials that you can purchase, download, or stream, please visit my website under shop or learn at www.crystalbeshera.com. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free tips and demonstrations. Watercolor paper comes in 22 inch by 30 inch formats and I just cut mine into quarters so that yields roughly an 11 inch by 15 inch sheet. I'm going to be working on 140 pound cold pressed paper so it's got a delightful texture to it and that's going to help us greatly in creating these wonderful and expressive textures that we're looking for here. So I'm going to be using a medium tack masking tape just to lightly tack my paper down. And you don't need to formally stretch your paper here because each rectangle that we're dividing up is roughly only about five by seven. You're not going to see a lot of warping and buckling, especially in this heavier weight, 140 pound paper. So we'll go ahead and create a frame. Half of my tape is on the edge of my paper and half of the one inch tape is on the board. I'm using a masonite board here, which is pretty smooth, but you can use gator board, or if you've got a smooth table, you can tape it right to your table if that's not an issue for you. You're going to want a test strip of paper, a nice pad of paper towel or a rag, and you may even want to have some Kleenex or tissue on hand. I always start by spritzing your palette. This primes your paint and gets it ready long before the color mixing begins. I'm using my synthetic filbert brush, which is nice and rigid and stiff and the slick nylon hairs make it easy to rinse my brush and it's also not going to soak up all my paint. So there's very little waste. It's really nice and efficient. 
The first color I'm putting out is Thalo Blue. I need it to be really clear and bright, so I wanted to start with that one before my water got too contaminated. The next color is Ultramarine Blue, beautiful, rich, and you can see in comparison that it almost has a reddish kind of quality to it. Between mixing colors, of course, I always want to rinse my brush to get rid of any excess pigment. We're going to be using a lot of ultramarine blue, so you can make a giant puddle of that. The next color is Prussian blue, and comparatively, it's a little bit greener and a little bit darker, certainly than the ultramarine, but even uh, darker and a little duller than our thalo blue. This will be a really wonderful color for our stormy skies. This violet that I'm putting out in the palette is my Da Vinci Violet, and it's like a dioxazine violet. Any violet that's not too blue and not too red is perfect. We're gonna be making a lot of custom grays, and in order to do that, I'm gonna be using my Burnt Umber. Now you can go on my YouTube channel and look up how to create dynamic grays to get all of these recipes in depth. Once the colors are out on the palette, I can dilute with a little bit of water. If you want a ready-made gray, you can use Payne's gray. It's got a quite a nice charcoal kind of um, visual to it, and it has a nice natural granular texture as well. I'm putting it out in the palette. I may or may not use it in this process, but if you've got it on hand, you might as well take advantage of it. Otherwise, I do recommend making your grays from scratch. For the first square, what I want to do is just show you how to achieve a simple gradated wash, which would be the equivalent of a really beautiful sunny sky. Before we start, I want to examine what a clear blue sky looks like. Notice that it's much darker at the top and becomes increasingly clearer and brighter towards the bottom. The sky is lighter and may even appear white near the horizon as a result of a phenomena called scattering, knee scattering or Rayleigh scattering. When light passes through the air, the different colors in the white light behave differently according to their wavelength. The blue or violet end of the spectrum refracts or bends the most. The way light scatters also explains why the sky is blue. The blue wavelengths bounce around the atmosphere and back to our eyes. Scattering also means that the further you look through the air, the more colors are mixed in, appearing less blue. The horizon is much farther away from us than the sky above, and therefore appears lighter. It's important then to remember that we'll use warmer, richer colors at the top and always using slightly greener, paler colors towards the bottom and closest to the horizon line. You're gonna to want to pre-wet your paper. So I'm using my one inch Thirsty Red. It's um, part of my line of brushes, but any one inch brush will do. Preferably a natural hair because it holds a lot of water. So I'm pre-wetting the surface of the paper to give a really nice um, skin to the paper. That will allow the paint to just float beautifully on top and not be absorbed right away into the paper. And that's a key uh, part of the success of creating a uniform wash. The two colors that I'm going to use for this really bright, cloudless, pristine sky are thalo blue and ultramarine blue. The two together are just brilliant in terms of creating that beautiful clarity. This is the thalo blue. You can see it's got kind of greenish undertones. I'm applying this to the bottom, closest to the horizon. So we're just imagining a horizon here. And I'm just gonna brush this about two thirds of the way up. And it's okay if it's a little bit streaky. As long as the paper is still really, really wet, 
um, any brush strokes will just sort of dissipate. Now before that dries, I want to get in my ultramarine and I'm gonna start at the top this time. And you can see compared to the thalo, it's got quite a reddish undertone. So what I'm doing here is then streaking it from the top down. Now, if you kind of nail it and everything ends up looking quite uniform, you can leave it. If you feel compelled to um, brush it through, you can actually, while it's glossy, use your brush in a vertical stroke as well to distribute it. But to be honest, um, a, cloud, a cloudless sky also has a little bit of texture. I wouldn't be too worried about any horizontal streaks that appear in this wash. This is just for practice. Um, I will show you how it looks if I brush it up and down as well. So it sort of integrates the two colors a little bit more. But again, unless your paper is really, really glossy, you will risk creating blooms in your paper. So you don't wanna to meddle too much here. <laughs> That's about all I would do. So there's an example of a beautiful cloudless sky. The next cloud that we're going to create is a typical cumulus cloud and those are those big billowy summer clouds that you see um, that typically have a bit of a flat bottom to them and cumulus is the low level cloud pretty much the most common sunny day cloud that you'll see especially during summertime sometimes these have a little bit of a grayish cast to them and we're going to do this in two parts we're going to do a perfectly sunny, bright white cloud. And then I'm gonna show you the option, if you wanted to, uh, to take that bright white cloud and turn it into a slightly more shadowy backlit cloud with a gray core and gray bottom. You're going to need a nice clean white square of paper. You're also going to need Kleenex or tissue really soft but not the kind with a lotion in it so you want to make sure that it's nice and crunched up it's the soft um, fibrous kind uh, not tissue paper but you know typical kleenex <laughs> and um, you're going to crush it up in advance and then just kind of let it go you want to make sure that there's lots of nice facades to them and you might even want to have a couple on hand you're going to want your big wash brush again a one inch brush would do and you might want an eight or a 10 round. So that's something with a good point. Once again, we're gonna start by creating a nice skin on the paper by pre-wetting the paper with just clean water. This way, the paint won't penetrate the paper right away. So there won't be any staining and this uh, will allow us to blot up the cloud shapes with the Kleenex more easily. So I'm going to take that wash that we just did and apply it to this. So once again, starting with the phthalo blue. For best results, you're gonna want a lot of contrast. So don't be afraid of really ramping up the pigment on this particular square. And again, I'm coming from the top down with my ultramarine. And if you want to get rid of any horizontal streaks, you can quickly and softly brush your big wash brush over top. So now before this dries, I want to take that crushed Kleenex and start blotting. And I want to blot hard and it will soak up all of the paint before it has a chance to dry. Now I can blot a few clouds like this. But after a while, the Kleenex is going to become quite stained and I don't want to press that stained Kleenex back accidentally into any cleaned out areas because that will stain that white portion of the cloud that we just cleared out. So I want to take that second crushed Kleenex and I can add a few more shapes here if I want to. You can attach them or you can kind of leave them like the Simpsons clouds all isolated and separate. It's up to you. Don't blot out too much because you do want to have some blue that will help to create that separation in the cloud. Now what will happen is because the blue is still active, it's still wet, 
and it will continue to kind of creep in to those edges that you've just blotted out. Now that can give you quite a nice effect. It will certainly give you really nice sharp edges. But if you feel like your cloud shapes are becoming increasingly smaller and smaller, you can just take your tissue again. And the lighter you press, the softer the edge will be, of course. And then the harder you press, the more pigment you'll soak up. So you can choose what type of edge you want your cloud to have. Now I wanna keep the bottom of my cloud shapes here a little bit more on the flat side because I do want to emulate that nice uh, cumulus kind of cloud effect. And I think that's it for now. I'm gonna let this dry naturally because I do want crispy edges. So I'm going to allow um, that paint to kind of creep in, like I said before, and sharpen up the edge for me. If I want a few little wispy clouds, I can just take the Kleenex and just twist it like so. You could even use a uh, Q-tip, but I find the Kleenex works a little bit better. And I can just do a few little wispy edges like this. One thing that I wanna do is make sure I have some perspective here. So I wanna make sure that my cloud at the top is going to be the cloud formation that's closer to us. And as we move back into space, the cloud shapes become more compressed and thinner and they will continue to have that feeling of being stacked on top of each other. So you can see this bottom section is made up of thin lines and you can do that with that little twisted Kleenex or you can just stamp in a thin line like this and for the clouds that are closest to us as you move up to the top part of your sky they should appear larger. That will give you a really nice and very easy sense of perspective. Super easy to accomplish. If you'd like to add a little bit more dimension or maybe just a bit of a, a grayer body to the clouds, you can move on to this next step, which is a glazing process that involves bringing in a slightly more uh, grayish and more violety tones to the core and to the bottom of these cumulus clouds. I'm also going to use those shadowy colors to create more separation and definition, especially in the clouds that are technically farther away from us and at the bottom of or towards the bottom of the horizon line. To create this gray color, I'm going to use a combination of violet, Prussian blue, and a little bit of burnt umber. Together, they will make a gray. Rather than mixing them together in my palette to create a uniform color, I'm actually gonna be mixing them on the surface of the paper independently of one another. By mixing them on the paper, I will create a much more dynamic range of uh, gray, and I think it will just add a little bit more dimension to the clouds. And that's something we're really um, after here, is to create dimension and volume in these clouds. The more dimension we have, the more volume we have, the more realistic they're going to be. I'm going to stand by with a little bit of crushed Kleenex here once again, just to ensure that um, my color doesn't spread where I don't want it to. Certainly, in terms of the blue pockets of sky that are showing through, what I want to do is work with a round brush now. I'm working with my number 10. Each of these sections is about a 5 by 7 so that gives you an idea of the scale of my brush to the shape and the size of the paper. I'm going to be pre-wetting the clouds because I want a softness to the brush stroke that I lay down. So I'm going to pre-wet a little bit of um, a larger, I'm gonna be pre-wetting a slightly larger shape than the shape that I actually want to paint in the gray color. So I'm wetting a larger area than the area that I'll actually be dropping the paint into. That's because I want the paint to spread a little bit and then slowly fade out. If I only wet exactly the spot that I want to paint gray, I'm going to have dry edges and it's going to create a hard edge to my shape and I want soft edges here. 
as a base, I'm going to start with my Prussian blue. So you can see as a blue, it's much duller and almost um, greener in a way, especially compared to the ultramarine. So what I'm doing here is just using uh, my brush kind of on its side and I'm sort of stamping this pigment, very, very pale pigment through the center and the bottoms of these cloud formations. Oh, you can see here, I hit a dry patch that I had not pre-wet. So that gives you an idea of what happens <laughs> when you don't pre-wet the area. It gives you a hard line. So you can see this beautiful spreading of pigment as it hits the wet paper. And that is something that we're after. I'm just gonna soften that. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to take a little bit of violet. This is like a dioxazine violet. And I'm gonna add that to some of the areas that I pre-wet. So I can put it inside the pockets of uh, Prussian blue that I just put down, or I can apply the violet elsewhere. Now this is quite vibrant, which is lovely but if you want to dull it down a little bit, this is where the burnt umber comes into play. So the burnt umber, of course, will dull it down and create a bit more of a grayish, stormy kind of effect. This will, as it dries, lighten about 10 to 15%. So right now it looks a little harsh, but I'm not too worried. If the paint is spreading somewhere that you don't want it to go, that's when you take your Kleenex once again, and you can actually stamp out new shapes. And because we had pre-wet those cloud shapes before we put these new grayer colors down, that little extra bit of skin that we created that the pigment is floating on top of keeps that new paint color from penetrating the paper. So once again, very easy to blot up the pigment that way. So I'm gonna do that again down here. Now remember earlier I had mentioned that the cloud shapes to indicate perspective, it's important for the cloud shapes to become more compressed and thinner and finer and skinnier and longer in appearance as you move down towards the bottom of your paper or closer to the horizon. So I'm just kind of streaking in some wet areas same process, I'm gonna start with the Prussian blue. I wanna create flat bottoms for our cumulus clouds. And sort of puffier shapes through the middle. I can wet out the edge or I can blot depending on the appearance. I'm gonna take a little bit of violet and just let that flow. And finally, a little bit of burnt umber. And this little bit of burnt umber is just going to add that grayish kind of quality. You do not have to use it. Maybe you're happy with just the Prussian on its own. It's up to you. Notice how I haven't wet the whole piece of paper again in its entirety and then addressed each cloud section, the top, the middle, and the bottom um, with the new color. Instead, I kind of isolated the areas first. There's no need to kind of wet the whole area. This gives me a lot more control over the placement of these new colors. So finally, I'm at the bottom. And again, I'm gonna streak in fine lines through here. This time, I think I will just use Prussian. So this is our thinnest section of cloud. It's the skinniest line. There we go.
Now that the paint has dried, I think the interior color of the clouds um, looks great, but I'm feeling like there's not enough contrast. I really do want that sunny but um, cloud-filled sky. So I'm going to just increase the vibrancy of the sky color behind, and I'm gonna go in with my phthalo blue this time. Once again, I'm standing by with some crushed Kleenex. This time I'm going to approach my painting on a dry surface. This time I'm working on a dry surface. You definitely wanna test that phthalo blue on a test strip first, it's extremely intense and uh, you might be surprised by it. So you can see when I work on a dry surface, um, the lines are quite crisp. If that is uh, giving you an overly stylized effect, you can soften those edges by blotting with the Kleenex. You have to act quickly though because the um, edges dry first and once you miss the boat, then you're kind of stuck with having to lift them out afterwards. So you can see the nice cool tone of this um, phthalo blue creates a much brighter, sunnier sky. And I'm painting the negative spaces in here and then creating some new ones while I'm at it. and blotting to soften. I can't make the white of the clouds any whiter than the white of the paper. The way to make the clouds look brighter is to increase the contrast. And that means making the negative space or the blue brighter and deeper. So I'm really just glazing here. Which means a nice transparent layer of paint on top of a dried layer of paint. So this is giving me a lot more of the effect that I was kind of looking for in the first place, which is a bit more drama in the sky bit more active negative space as well. And blotting to lighten. And you can really fine tune your shapes this way and control your lost and found edges by creating maybe a few really delicate shapes that perhaps you weren't able to um, create the first time around. You can certainly use a little bit of water to soften any shapes as well. If your edges are too harsh, you can alternate between blotting and softening with water. And it's safe to do both because this paper is completely dry. People run into trouble when they're trying to do too many things on damp paper. So because we allowed that first layer to dry perfectly, bone dry, it has um, given us the security of not disturbing those underpainted layers. So I'm just going to make sure that we're keeping up with our system of smaller strokes and finer shapes as we move down to the bottom of the paper. Make sure your negative spaces also decrease in scale as you move down the paper. Keep 
playing and having fun, seeing the difference between adding paint to a wet surface versus a dry surface, using different edges of your brush, and alternating between warm and cool blues. The final touch is to do any lifting where edges you have around your clouds might feel a little too stiff or rigid or harsh. So I'm taking um, a synthetic bristle brush. This is my ivory flat. I've got a little bit of water on it and I'm just lightly scrubbing up the surface. And then I blot away any excess pigment that comes up scrubbing at the surface and then blotting. And again, this just kind of takes off um, some of the harshness to a few of the edges so that we get that really nice combination of lost and found edges. So the found edges being these hard edge shapes and then the lost ones being the edges that we kind of lose into the negative space. And it's a really pretty combination. And there you have it, a really easy three-step process in creating cumulus clouds on a bright, sunny summer or winter sky. Okay, so we're moving on to our next cloud formation and we're looking at high level clouds and in particular the cirrus cloud. So these are those beautiful sunny day with just that light wispy cloud drifting through the sky that have a softness and an airiness to them and they can dissipate really quickly. So that's what we're looking to emulate in this particular demonstration. So once again, we're gonna want a big wash brush. We're gonna want some clean tissue on hand and we're gonna be using that combination of ultramarine at the top and the phthalo blue at the bottom. So I'm going to start by pre-wetting the paper. Once again, that just creates that really nice layer of water that the pigment will sit on top of so it doesn't have a chance to stain. And that's really important because we want to be able to sort of whisk away some of those um, clouds. So I'm gonna start with the phthalo blue and I'm going to streak that into the bottom. I think it's important in this cloud uh, formation in particular, these cirrus clouds, to make sure that your sky color is pigmented enough. If it's too weak in value, the cloud effect that you're trying to achieve is not gonna be strong enough. So don't be afraid to use a fair amount of pigment here. So the phthalo at the bottom and the ultramarine at the top, and then just bringing it down. Once again, you can lift out some of the pigment just to create a little bit of a lighter value at the bottom closest to the horizon. And this can be done wet into wet. Okay. So what I'm gonna be doing, rather than crushing the Kleenex and blotting down hard, 
I'm gonna just create a nice little tail and I'm gonna just streak it through. I'm gonna press and lift, press and lift, and I'm gonna just keep doing that. Now, once again, um, as with our other cloud formations, I wanna make sure that the Kleenex doesn't become too contaminated, otherwise you risk staining the white part of your paper. You can get a finer tail by twisting a finer shape. And you might even want to stamp if you want just a little bit of a brighter value in the white. So you can stamp in the center part and then lift off. And it's truly that easy. Once again, a ridiculously simple demonstration on how to create a beautiful and easy cloud effect with just two colors and some Kleenex. For a final demonstration, I wanna show you how to create a lower level cloud just before a rainstorm. So these are your stratocumulus clouds before they turn into nimbostratus. Once again, we're gonna be doing this without the use of masking fluid. All you need is a big wash brush, like a one inch wash brush, a number 10 round, and of course our handy little crushed tissue or Kleenex. <laughs> so that's our final tool. So I'll be starting this final square by pre-wetting the surface. I wanna make sure I don't have any dry patches. Don't over wet it though, because you can disturb the uh, sizing of your paper. And for this one, I'm actually going to start laying in some um, Prussian blue right away. So we're moving down to darker, stormier clouds, which means darker, stormier colors. So rather than our bright phthalo and ultramarine that we were using earlier, we're working with grayer, duller tones. So I'm laying in my Prussian blue. I'll switch to my number 10 round. And with any cloudy sky, just remember the perspective is key. So the clouds higher up on the paper will appear closer to us and they need to be larger in scale. And you can even exaggerate the difference of scale. Even if you're working from a photo or in real life, if that might not be the case, you can intentionally compress these shapes so that the layers of the clouds appear to recede into the horizon. So big blocky round shapes on top, slightly more caterpillar elongated shapes through the middle, and finally just stripes through the bottom of the paper. I can leave a little bit of white exposed, but now I'm going to go into my violet. And the violet I'm gonna kind of keep towards the edges. And again, notice how I'm using the side of my brush to create these sort of softer, more billowy shapes. And then when I get to the bottom portion, I switch to using the tip of the brush so that I'm um, getting finer shapes. I'm letting the water that's on the paper, letting that kind of wetness to carry and spread the paint out so I don't have to manipulate it too, too much. The paint's just gonna spread because the paper's still quite wet. Finally, if I wanna make this feel a little grayer, I'm gonna go into that burnt umber. And I'm just mixing right on the surface here, and that kind of adds a little bit of warmth to the clouds. 
you're welcome to use Payne's gray or Davy's gray, your favorite gray, whatever that might be. You can experiment a little bit. But this is my crystal gray combination. Um, you can check out my YouTube channel for the full tutorial on creating dynamic grays. And that will give you a little bit more of a lesson on the ratios. I like mixing on the surface of the paper though because it gives me that beautiful dynamic range. And you can see the more I stir it up, the more um, uniform that gray becomes. So if you want to do that, just keep stirring them up or you can mix all three in your palette and bring it over to your paper. So I'm gonna just open up a little bit of sky and I'm gonna pop open a few brighter clouds in the distance just to give these farmers a little bit of hope. <laughs> the skies are clearing up. The storm is passing by us. It's not gonna hit. The harder I press, the harder the edges will be, the crunchier the edges will look. This is still really, really wet, so that means I can actually go in and um, add, continue to add color if I want to. And it is for that reason that I'm also able to still blot out these colors. Um, if you miss the boat and your paint starts to dry up, you won't be able to blot up your color and you won't be able to get those crunchy edges. You'll have to resort to lifting out your color with a damp brush afterwards. So I'm actually just trying to get a little bit of light back in here to animate the sky a little bit. And then before it dries up, I'm just taking a combination of all three of those colors to make more of a uniform gray. And I'm just gonna deepen the core of some of these more ominous looking clouds. Now back to my Prussian, but you can really just play around here. And again, as long as your paper's still quite wet, there's no issue adding color. A little bit drier up there. If you want, you can even play with tilting your board, tipping your board a little bit to let some of that color move around. You could even splatter a little bit. To create a little bit of extra texture or perhaps you want to create some intentional blooms and drop in big blobs of clean water. And this will really animate your sky. It certainly will feel like you're a little bit of uh, at a loss of control here, but you'll get some really beautiful and spontaneous results. And the colors that you applied, the burnt umber, the Prussian and the violet will begin to move in this new active paper and create a really beautiful felted kind of look. So I'm just gonna tip this and let this run a little bit. I'm just using my one inch wash brush here with a little bit of water. So you could leave the clouds the way they were, or if you're turning this into a sudden rainstorm, you can play with the water ratio before that paint completely dries and just create some movement by tipping your paper and letting gravity do some of the work. If you feel that the result is a little too soft after having uh, dripped water in through the wet pigment, you can go back on a dry surface and add some crispier edges. You could even do some lifting if you want to control some lights as well. 
Here I'm just adding a little bit of Prussian blue and running some water through it. I'm enhancing the gray areas that are still a little bit damp with my gray mixture. If you're using Payne's Gray, that will do the trick as well. Just adding a little bit more contrast and definition. Back to the Prussian Blue, but of course you can use any color that you'd like to enhance at this point. Just be sure not to lose all of your whites. The key is to have a range of values so that the sky doesn't end up looking flat or muddy. You have just completed four completely different skies using only five colors. You've created volume, light, and shadow, and the illusion of depth and perspective. I hope you found this really useful, and I hope this enhances your next landscape painting. Thanks for watching everyone. For a complete list of full video tutorials that you can purchase, download, or stream, please visit my website under shop or learn at www.crystalbashera.com. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free tips and demonstrations.